months. Go ahead, Brandon. See, Hebrews eleven six says, But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He must be, we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that seek him. No, now he adds another word. Diligently seek him. Diligently. So not only are we going to crave and beg and desire, now we're going to exatio, which means search out, investigate, carefully seek out. Instead of just zateo, now we got exateo. Diligently seek him. You'll be rewarded if you diligently seek him. The word diligent means, in our language, it means persevering action. It means constant, persistence. Do you hear what I'm saying? Guys, there are tornadoes going on all around me, but it ain't in me. It ain't in me. It doesn't matter what the devil tries to do because I stand before him with clean hands and a pure heart. I say, give it your best shot. Because evil was created to drive out evil. When you don't have any evil, when you don't have, when you have clean hands and a pure heart, there's no reason why I need a spanking. See, the children of Israel, when they started worshiping other gods, that's when the enemy came. But see, I'm not worshiping other gods. I'm seeking him. I'm craving him. I'm begging. I'm searching out. I look in that scripture. I read so much to find him just for one little morsel to hear from my father every day. That's how I live my life. And that's why I will walk from this earth, when my father says, onto an ark, and then the earth will be destroyed, and I'll be fine. And it's, it's effortlessly. And I'll show you that tonight. So in Luke 15, 8 through 10, it says, Or what woman, this is an example of what diligent search is, that she has ten silver coins and loses one coin. And she, she searches carefully the house. She sweeps the house until she finds it. Hey, guys. And when she's found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the coin which I'd lost. I guarantee if you lost $100, you would search your house. You would sweep. You would go through all your pockets. You would go through the washing machine, the dryer. You'd go everywhere looking for that $100. But the sad thing is we don't search for God like that. Not even for a, a stupid little piece of paper. Go ahead. It will be given to you is didymi, and it means to give by connection of the hand. The hand is the fivefold, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And we're called, that's how your path is to oneness with God. You grow in your apostolic foundation. That's your judgment. If you want to be one with God, you got to come before his face. And it is so hard, I'm not going to lie to you. Because when you come, that light is so bright. You see how dirty you are. And you're like, uh-uh, I don't. And you apply the blood of Jesus and you keep coming. Because that's what the blood of Jesus is for. The blood of Jesus is not some kind of sprinkling lotion that you put on the devil and say, stay away. The blood of Jesus is to apply to you so you can go boldly before your father. And so you keep coming and you let him say, you know, I love you so much that I really don't want you to do this anymore. And you have to listen and you have to obey. And that's why we have mentors set up here in this church. Because we want to hold your hand and we want to walk with you. And we want to, if you can't hear the Father, then you need ears. And I know the mentors we've set up here are not trying to control anybody. They just want to make sure that you're hearing the Father. So that you can be trained, equipped, and then you can be released. Because you can hear the Father. And then when you reach level two, then not only are you judged... But guys, when you've been through the judgment process, you love your father so much and you're so grateful that he's cleaned you out that you're looking in your brethren for something redeemable. And he makes you a judge. Now the first thing you're going to say is judge not lest you be judged. Look up the Greek word. 
The Greek word is krema, and it means don't sue lest you be sued. Is that the same thing as judge? No, it's not. We are called to be judges. Why do you think the devil runs rampant in our world? Because the church has said, oh, no, we don't judge. No, you don't judge out of your soul. But when you come into that oneness, when you've stood before your father and you've been judged, and you're clean, you've got clean hands and a pure heart, you've got a desire to be clean, then the Lord shows you how to judge to help people come forward. You judge to redeem people, not to destroy them. Because, see, they're victims. But, see, if you don't judge, then you're not going to bring justice to the victims. The victimizers need to be judged. Or you can't bring justice to someone who's been hurt. So it says in Psalm 82, I say you're gods. I say you're judges. How long will you judge unrighteously? We're called to judge. But you can't judge out of your soul. You can't judge out of your mind or your emotions. It has to be out of what you hear your father saying. There are people that I want to call fire down from heaven and consume them right now. But that's my soul. And my soul doesn't rule me. My father says, look, keep looking, keep looking. And he's bringing people to me to show me what's going on with this person. And I am a good judge. And I say, Father, move this out of the way. And then they move that out of the way, and then they come. And a testimony of that right now is Alicia here tonight. It's awesome what God can do when you love his, his, his family. Alicia's his family. Alicia's his kid. I don't have anything against Alicia. If you want to get rid of your enemies, save them. Be, it, be somebody that carries their burdens. Be somebody that loves them, although they haven't loved you. And watch what God does. So, it will be given to you, Didymi, to give by connection of the hand, the fivefold. So the apostolic foundation. Then you've got the prophetic foundation. And then you've got the evangelistic foundation. And you grow in your knowledge of the Lord. You grow in that to become one with the Father again. But you do that by saying, yes, Lord, whatever you want, Father. And I'm going to tell you, he's going to tell you some scary things to do. But as you obey, you become one with him again. And he says, um, it says, also it says, suffer, take. Didymi is connected to suffer and take. People don't think, people think all the time that Jesus has done everything for them, like I said. But you know what it says in the Bible? It says if you're going to rule and reign with Christ like they think they are, you're going to suffer with him. You don't get the glory without paying the price. You have to pay the price. That's what Jesus was being tempted with by the devil. He said, you don't have to pay the price. You don't have to go to the cross. Just worship me. I'll give you the earthly kingdoms. That was a huge temptation not to pay the price. So Didymi, when it says it will be given unto you, it implies given to means suffering. So you're going to have to suffer for it, but it will be given unto you. That's what the Greek word is. In order to have, to take, to have power, you have to suffer, guys. I'm telling you, because suffering molds you. Suffering shapes you. Suffering burns out all that junk. And see, you've got to be able to stand before your father's face. You can't not be a judge. You cannot be used by God if you don't stand before his face. And that fire that you stand before him is immense love that he burns up anything that hinders your relationship with him. That's what that fire is. So then it says, seek, like we said, zeteo, means to worship God with your life. My life is a worship. To plot, to inquire, to desire. And it says, you shall find. That word is hurisco. And it means to obtain perceive to see so you're going to see as you seek him okay so it implies that something is hidden from natural sight you're going to need different eyes and it says knock like i said now another place that it says knock is revelation 320 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice. Now, why wouldn't we hear if somebody's standing at the door and knocking? Because you got to have special eyes and you got to have special ears to be able to hear him, to be able to see what he's doing. This is not going to work for you guys. These are natural senses. This is what happened when the fall of man happened. We were supposed to be able to see spiritually and hear spiritually with our, what our father was saying. But now we have a smaller range with just our natural sight and our natural ears. It implies that we need a special hearing. So the gospel of the kingdom is only for those with eyes to see and ears to hear. In Romans 11, 8 through 10, God gave them a spirit of stupor. Eyes to see not and ears to hear not down to this very day. And for that reason, David says, let their table become a snare and a trap and a stumbling block. Do those sound like good things? Not to me. And a retribution to them. So let their eyes be darkened to see not and bend their backs forever. Why? Because they won't seek truth. So that they fall in snares and traps because they're not going the right way. They won't diligently seek truth. They would rather believe a lie, which is religion. Religion doesn't imply obedience. It implies man's traditions. If you all believe man's traditions, I'll, I'll teach you that four plus two plus two equals nine. And if you don't understand that, if you don't agree with me, then I need to have a meeting with you and I need to explain why four plus two plus two equals nine. But we know with our natural senses, that's eight. Don't tell me something stupid like that. But that's what the church does today. The church teaches things that are upside down because they teach from the soul and not the spirit. They work the emotions up. Oh, Jesus is coming tomorrow, and you're not ready. You're a sinner. Blah, 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 blah. Working their, working their soul up where they're crying, and oh, I'm scared to death. I don't want to go to hell. But guys, is that enough tomorrow to put the crack pipe down? Because I'm telling you right now, when you make a decision in your soul, your mind and your emotions, that's not your will. You're a spirit, soul, and a body. Your soul, your mind, and your emotions has nothing to do with your will. Your soul wants to sin. Your soul wants to do a lot of things. But when you're led by the Spirit, you say, Soul, I know you want to do these things, but I'm going this way. That's what it meant when Jesus said, Not my will, but your will, Father, be done. You think he wanted to go to the cross and get his body ripped up? Of course not. He was human. He didn't want to go through that. But his will was stronger than his soul. And that's what has to happen, guys. Our soul can't lead us. We can't believe lies. We can't be fed this junk. That's just being saved in the soul. That's not enough. You've got to make a decision and live by that decision. Let that decision guide every decision you make. Because truth implies responsibility and obedience. Go ahead, Madison. Matthew eleven twelve 12 through 15, from the days of John the Baptist. This is just the place where I wanted to show you where it says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. It says it all through the Bible. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. In Ezekiel 12, 2, it says, Son of man, you live in the midst of the rebellious house who have eyes to see but do not see, ears to hear but do not hear, for they're a rebellious house. So if you are a rebellious person, you're not going to have eyes to see or ears to hear the way to go. Because rebellion causes your eyes and ears to close. So in Mark 4.24, it says, take care what you listen to. Only listen to truth. Don't allow the devil to fill up your ears. It's your choice what you think about all day. Isn't it your mind? So the Bible says when you sow to the soul, you reap from the soul. When you sow to the spirit, you reap from the spirit. So if you sit there and you let your mind just think all kinds of thoughts, and it's not godly thoughts, guess what? You are planting a seed, and you're watering that seed, and it's going to come up. And before you know it, you'll be in a situation that you wish you weren't in. But did you make the decision right there? No, you did not. You made the decision when you decided to think on it. 
The Bible says take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Casting down every imagination that exalts itself above the name of Christ. So you seek truth, not man's traditions. Man's traditions is not truth. Jesus 